Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. Here we have a problem which involves a diprotic acid, oxalic acid. And we're asked to calculate the pH of a 0.15 molar oxalic acid solution. And we're also asked to determine the equilibrium concentrations of oxalic acid, hydrogen oxalate, and the oxalate ion. So let's first talk a little bit about these diprotic acids. Remember, there are two ionizable hydrogens, and the first Ka is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2. And notice that the second Ka is much smaller. So let's go ahead and determine the pH first of the solution. For a polyprotic acid, the pH can be determined from the first dissociation. So it can be determined from Ka1, okay? But let's go ahead and see how this is done. So let me write the chemical equation here for that first hydrogen. So we have oxalic acid, and of course that's in water and we have this equilibrium then between hydronium ion and the hydrogen oxalate, okay? And for this we know that K is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative two. So what we need to do here then is determine the pH of the solution. And again, that can be determined from the first association. And let's set up our table, initial change and in equilibrium concentration. So our initial concentration is 0.15 molar. And here, uh, we do ignore the uh, dissociation of water, okay, because that's gonna be very small. And so this concentration is going to decrease by some amount X. And of course, the amount of hydronium ion and the amount of hydrogen oxalate ion is going to increase by that amount X. So it's going to, inc because remember, the dissociation involves the formation of the hydronium ion and the hydrogen oxalate ion. So then at equilibrium, we'll have this, 0.15 minus x. Here we just have x and x. So our acid dissociation expression then is going to be due to the concentration of hydronium ion, hydrogen oxalate ion, divided by the concentration of the oxalic acid. Uh, we can go ahead and set this up. We have Ka1, so we have 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 is equal to X for the hydronium ion concentration and times X for the hydrogen oxalate concentration divided by 0 0.15 minus X. Okay. Now, in this case here, we usually make an assumption. Now, here's the problem. Ka1 is pretty large at 10 to the negative 2, and we have a decent concentration of the oxalic acid. I have a feeling that we're going to have to use the quadratic formula here, but let's go ahead and make the simplifying assumption that 0.15 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.15 molar. Okay, that's our assumption. We'll check that in a minute. So that means that we can simplify this expression, and I can rewrite that as 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 is equal to x squared over 0 0.15. So now what I can do is solve for x, and x is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.15 
times 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So that's going to be 0 0.091. Six five molar. We'll worry about significant figures a little bit later. All right, let's go ahead then and check our assumption. Okay, we'll use the five percent rule. So I will take zero point zero nine one six five, divide that by the initial concentration, multiply by a hundred, and I get sixty one percent. 61% is much greater than 5%, so we have to use the quadratic formula. We cannot use the simplifying assumption here. Again, we had a larger k value, 10 to the negative 2, and a higher concentration of 0.15 molar, so I had a feeling we would not be able to use that. What we need to do is go back to this expression here and so what we have is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 is equal to x squared over 0 0.5 whoops 0 0.15 minus x so let's go ahead and so we have 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 times 0.15 minus x equals x squared. So let's go ahead and multiply this through here. That gives us 0 0.0084 minus 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2x. And that's equal to x squared. Let's get everything to one side. So we have x squared plus 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2x and that would be minus 0 0.0084 equal to 0. So now we can use the quadratic equation. Um, so here we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 and c equals a negative 0.0084. So what we have here for our quadratic formula is x is equal to a negative plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this will give us two roots. So x is equal to a negative 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 plus or minus I'm going to go ahead and calculate this in a minute so square root of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 squared time minus 4 a is 1 and c is the negative negative 0.0084 and that's all over 2 times a which is 1. Let's go ahead and calculate our first x so that's going to be x is equal to a negative 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 plus I'm going to go ahead and calculate this term right here. So I'll put that into the calculator. The square root of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times a negative 0 0.0084 divided by 2 and that gives us x equal to 0 0.0678 and let's do the other way so our other x is negative 5.6 times 
times 10 to the negative 2 minus 0 0.19167 over 2 and a negative 0 0.0678. Okay, x cannot be negative. R look, right up here, we're shown that x is equal to the concentration of hydronium ion and the hydrogen oxalate ion. So we can't have a negative concentration. This is it. But we can determine the pH then from this first dissociation of a polyprotic acid. So x is equal to 0.06. I'll keep track of significant figures this way. Molar, which is equal to the concentration of hydronium ion. So the pH is the negative log of 0 0.0678, and that's 1.17. We have a pH of 1.17. Now, we're asked to determine the equilibrium concentrations. So, you know, here we know that for the concentration of the oxalic acid that would be 0 0.15 molar minus X which is 0 0.0678 and that would be 0 0.082 molar and then concentration of the hydronium ion we know that's 0 0.0678 molar and the concentration of the hydrogen oxalate ion is also 0 0.0678 molar. What we need now is the concentration of the oxalate ion. So in order to get that, we have to look at our second Ka value, so Ka2. So the second dissociation is going to be the hydrogen oxalate ion and remember much uh, the dissociation here is going to be much more difficult right because look at the Ka value for the dissociation that is 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 much smaller than Ka1. So what we have here is, of course, hydronium ion. Plus the oxalate ion. Okay. And then of course we have Ka2 is 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5. So 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5. So again, I'm going to set up my table here. And remember, a very little of this is going to dissociate. All right, we have a Ka2 of 10 to the negative 5, much smaller than Ka1. Let's go ahead and do our table. So initial concentrate er, change and equilibrium concentration. We already know the concentration of the hydrogen oxalate ion from step one. So that's going to be 0 0.0678 molar. And we know the concentration of the hydronium ion. That is 0 0.0678 molar. And what we're looking for is this concentration here. So the change would be 0 0.0678 molar minus x, some concentration x that dissociates. And this would be 0 0.0678 molar plus x. And then here that would be x because this is going to dissociate into hydronium and oxalate ion. 
by equal amounts that this decreases. So here we go. We can set up our Ka2 and here we could just rewrite this again. Um, I should have just had minus x here. 0, 6, 7, 8 plus x and then this is x. So our Ka2 is due to the hydronium ion concentration, the oxalate ion concentration over the hydrogen oxalate ion concentration. So we can go ahead then and write that as 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to hydronium ion concentration is 0 0.0678 plus x, and then we multiply that by x, and then our hydrogen oxalate concentration is 0 0.0678 minus x, and here we can assume that 0 0.0678 plus x is just equal to, approximately equal to 0 0.0678 and 0 0.0678 minus x, again, approximately equal to 0 0.0678. So we have our assumptions here. So that means we can simplify the expression to look like this, 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to 0.0678x over 0 0.0678. Look what happens here. These cancel. So x is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5. It's equal to Ka2, which is the case for a diprotic acid. The concentration then of the oxalate ion is equal to x, and it's equal to 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Again, we have a very small amount that dissociates. But you know what? Let's just check our assumption here, okay? We would take 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5, divide that by 0 0.0678, and multiply by 100, and I get 0.08%. That is much less than 5%. So our assumption was valid, and we were able then to determine the pH of the solution, which was 1.17. We were able to determine all of the equilibrium concentrations and here's another one right here with no problem. So for a diprotic acid, the pH can be determined from the first step. And for that second dissociation, the concentration, our oxalate ion, was equal to Ka2. I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.